Hey everybody, in this video, if you're new to the launch monitor game, whether you're having the flight scopes or you're having SkyTrack, any of them, you need to go do what we're talking about in today's video. Hey everybody, Scott Oden coming at you. We're here in the studio. Gonna do a little bit of a different video today. We're gonna head into the office. We're gonna get on the computer and show you something really cool from the PGA Tour this year that is going to help you if you're new to the launch monitor game or if you're not, you just need to check out some numbers. You're kind of a golf nerd like me. Let's go look at them. So we'll do that and this works for any launch monitor. It doesn't have to be any of the Mevos or the Mevo Plus, any launch monitor. I think it can really help you out and understand what is going on. Before we do that, make sure you click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. And with that, let's get over to the computer. All right, everybody. So it's Scott Hogan coming at you here. We're gonna go over something here that I, again, I think is so cool. Um, if you're somebody that has a, has a launch monitor now, you're new to the launch monitor game. I think this is something that you should do all the time. At least if you're brand new to the launch monitor game, get on this PGA Tour website, what I'm gonna show you here today, and check it out because this is really, really cool stuff. And I think everybody could benefit from going here and learning something. So something new that's come up this year is if you actually go to the pjtour.com and you go to the leaderboard, you're going to obviously see the normal leaderboard that you have always had. Now, what I like is, and I've always done this, I usually, you know, we'll have an iPad around or something um, as we go. Ooh, look at this, picking Tommy at a good time. Um, but you've always had this shot tracker that you can look at. Now, this year, what I've noticed is they've had this 3D button. So I noticed it first on the iPhone app. I haven't found it on the, the iPad app, which is a little different. Um, personally, I always like the iPad app better, but they I couldn't find this 3D thing on there. And so what this is, is a 3D tracker. And it's pretty cool just from the standpoint that you're going to, you know, hey, you can go through each shot. You can see how far away um they were and how far away they hit it they'll play you some videos and whatnot of uh, if they have the footage so you could see each shot as it's played but here's the cool thing as you go through you can look at on shot number one here if you click the t shots on every single hole that's where they have their track man set up they're actually displaying some of the data for you to look at so this is really, really cool because you can start looking at the data and have some reference of what numbers you should be looking at while you're playing or hitting balls on your own launch monitor. So I think this is really cool. You can get some, obviously get good driver data. This is a drive. Um, you can see how fast players are swinging it. This is a drive that 117 miles per hour, he hit it 173 mile an hour ball speed. So his smash 1.48, which is slightly low for a tour player. And you can obviously see the resulting shot, which would have an effect on spin rate. Now, this particular shot went 309 yards. Here's the one thing you have to be careful um, was happened to watch this shot live. This ball hit the cart path. OK, so you're not going to have that factored in to what's going on because you know, whatever's going on in the round of golf. So you do have to be careful with that as you're going through. Now, what I like is you can go through a, a couple of shots through the round. What you do is just change the hole. So if we go back, let's go to the, to the eighth hole. This is at the TPC Boston, by the way. So this is a par three. So it's a 200 yard hole, 213 yards on the broadcast. Most guys were hitting five irons. So, you know, safe to assume Tommy Fleetwood probably in that that ballpark of a five iron as well. So if we do click on the tee shot again, we do get the ball speed. We are going to get the spin rate. So you can have that data for your for an iron. Now, again, you're not going to see the club speed. All right. So that's one thing they take out and then they take smash factor out because you don't you need club speed to have that. But just something to keep in mind as you're going through, um, you could have a look at what's going on. Now, why is this valuable information? I think it's really important. You know, if you're somebody that thinks, all right, hey, I hit the ball a certain distance, you want to check these numbers and see if you're getting those numbers. Now, is it possible that your unit 
if you have a launch monitor could you know we have a lot of questions brought up to me as like hey is my unit off is there something wrong with it you know that's possible that's part of why you want to know the numbers you're looking for because i think a lot of times the club speed works really well i think you could get, get good reads we do, we've checked that with our our separate launch or our separate club head speed reader i think you can see that and that it's pretty good but if you're swinging, let's say you are swinging 150 miles an hour and you get it 240 yard carry and you're getting four, you know, 4,200 RPMs of spin. Okay. Something's going on there. I would check the setup. I would check the, the radar. I would be calling support, things like that. But, you know, if you're saying, Hey, I carry the ball 280 yards normally, I, you know, I'm not doing that on here. And then, you know, your swing speed's hundred miles an hour. Well, you know, you're probably not going to be doing that. Um, here's a good example we were looking for. So again, you got some options over here on the right, you know, you're zoom in and out. You can't actually see where the hole is at and all that stuff. So again, if you're watching it, um, you can see that. And, you know, some cool little stats that I'm actually going to go over in another video of what you can learn and look at as you're going through. But uh, anyway, so what you can do is actually search for another player. And I'm going to search for Spieth because I did see him hit a drive that I think we could use as a great example. So we are going to go to, let's see, we want to go to the second hole for Spieth. This was today. Okay. And so this particular drive that Spieth hit. OK, again, Jordan Spieth, he's sneaky long. He's not the longest player, but he's, you know, he doesn't get a lot of credit for how, you know, how long he is. This particular drive, as we kind of work our way in, I wanted to bring this one up because this hole was kind of playing a little bit. You know, it was a little bit into the wind. I believe the tee shot's a little bit uphill. Um, and so these guys were only hitting at 285. Tiger hit it on this hole with 117 mile an hour club speed. He hit it 285 yards as well, um, even though his was a little offline. But look at the club speed and see the difference in how the environment can have just a big effect. I think this is what you see if you got a ball that's not going to roll a lot, like if it's going into the wind or if you've got a shot where, hey, it's going to, you know, play uphill again, not going to roll a lot. Look at the difference in distance that happens. So, again, when we see players that play on tour, you know, you do have to pay attention to their agronomy that is out there. Um, it's pretty firm and fast. They do that by design. One, the club companies want the distance up. All these guys are sponsored. I mean, look at the top of the screen. Sponsored by a club company. They want the distance up because that's what sells drivers. The other thing is it does make the courses, if it's firm and fast, it you know there's this thought that it plays more challenging um, because the ball is going to run out of play and things like that. You know, that's that's got a little bit of merit to it as well, I would say. But again, really cool. I would just start checking through. The other thing I would check and notice, you know, just the shape of the shot. How does that affect the numbers? Jordan here hit a, a pretty good draw and you saw Tommy hit a, a fade on the last hole and look at the differences in spin rates, things like that. Again, Tommy's ball in the last hole hit the cart path. So he got a ton of roll because he hit the cart path three times. So obviously his distance was farther, but just paying attention to metrics. And if you start getting a visual of how different shapes affect numbers, I think that's going to help you understand what's going on with a launch monitor. And also, you know what, you might be able to just start kind of figuring out what you want, how you maybe you figure out how to hit a shot. I think it's a really cool way. And this is where I think golf has come a long way with the advent of, you know, launch monitors or having those integrated into golf so heavily is because we have learned these things and you learn what different shapes affect the ball in which ways. And now players are better than ever. So just wanted to show that to you. Again, I think it's a really cool thing and we'll go from there. But thanks everybody for tuning in. Again, if you like videos like this, if you like these videos where we kind of go through concepts and things that you can do, let me know, leave a comment down below. And as always, we'll have more with the Mevo Plus and helping you with your swing, plus a couple of fun ones coming up. So make sure you don't miss out on those. Click that subscribe button down below. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.